Man, we got a lot to talk about here today. I'm a little bit behind over here on the True Crime channel, but bear with me. I got some breaking news, though, to all my, my people. Trump 9-0, Supreme Court ballot, a Supreme Court decision will remain on the ballots. That's neither here nor there. You can go to my political pages for that. Anyways, today we're going to be talking about the Madeline Soto story. The Lake, we're going to update the Lake and Riley story. I'm going to give a few different words about Brian Koberger and all that news. I'm JB Gunner. This is Crime Time. Let's get into it. Let's do it. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? As you guys know, I'm JB Gunner, and this is Crime Time. Sorry, I've been traveling, been doing my thing, amusement parks, beaches, every man, I've been busy, but I didn't forget about you. I've been doing content every day. There's just not a lot of true crime news, but there is these stories in which I did not necessarily cover up well the lake and riley i did of course because it involves illegal immigration but we'll be talking about that as well in this story because i want to i, I want to give my comments on madeline soto the beautiful young girl that you see next to me uh, a lot going on with that uh, before we get into this though i want to say thank you to everybody that supports the channel any of my channels regardless of platform regardless of method you choose whether it's cash app patreon venmo paypal Truth is, guys, I couldn't do this each and every day as often as I do if it wasn't for you. Big shout out to you guys. Love you so much. Uh, appreciate you. And if you too find my content valuable, feel free to hit the links down below. Join the Gun Squad. Support the channel. You can also find my other content, my other channels down there as well. Let's not bullshit too often. Let's get into this story. Guys, I, I need to change this fucking date. That's what I'm going to do right now. and make y'all watch. Monday, March 4th. Is today's current day. But anyway, missing Madeline Soto, a beautiful young girl, 13-year-old girl. Uh, she's been found dead in a wooded area after mom's boyfriend and prime suspect in disappearance was seen driving with the 13-year-old girl's lifeless body in car after dumping backpack in trash can. Something tells me that the camera caught him dumping the backpack. Now, I, I know there's a lot of people in this community that follow every single detail. They read shit on Reddit. Um, a lot of times with these stories, I do dig in. I do read paperwork. However, I don't like follow all the, 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 the YouTubers or the Reddit posters that just kind of make shit up as they go. So, like I said, I'm going to give straight, just straight shoot you and give you my opinion. When it comes to this story, I got to say this, though. How can anybody ride around with a dead child? I'm sorry. Just, just in the car. Other cars can see it. They can drive by and see the shit. How in the fuck can any human being drive around with a dead 13-year-old girl? It's appalling to me. The body of a 13-year-old Madeline Soto has been discovered in a wooded area. By the way, this is in my area. I'm currently in Orlando, um, in a wooded area near the location where she went missing. Well, actually, right now I'm in Tampa, but I'm going back to Orlando. Marking the end of a four-day search. Osceola County Sheriff's Office search teams found her at 4.30 p.m. on Friday. St Stephen Stearns, age 37, is the prime suspect and has been jailed on other charges. Uh, which, I mean, that's how they get you. Charge, they put you in jail and then uh, where you can't get out and then they uh, dig up before they can charge. They, they do that in order to make the charges stick that way. By the time they do charge you, they, you know, because usually when they charge you, you got 72 hours, 48 hours until they got to release you if, they're, if they don't have anything to indict you on. And I think this uh, was a genius move by uh, Osceola County. Anyway, he has been charged with he has been observed driving the car with the teen's body in the back. I don't understand how he got past that entire situation. The body of a 13-year-old Madeline Soto has been found in the woods close to where she disappeared four days after she was reported missing. And just like with any other case, I'll give you my my. Um, my thoughts on this and my prediction of how what happened at the end of this. Osceola County Sheriff's Office search team found her at 4.30 p.m. on Friday afternoon. They say her body was found wearing clothing similar to what Maddie was last wearing. A green sweatshirt, black shorts, and white Crocs. Now, that's good news that she was at least wearing clothing because I guess we can hope that he didn't do no chomo shit. We'll see. The grim discovery came hours after police revealed Madeline's mother 
Stearns' boyfriend, is the prime suspect in her murder. Stearns was seen driving his uh, 2010 Lincoln with the teenager's lifeless body still in the vehicle after dumping her backpack and laptop in the trash. I assume they have some sort of video of him doing said thing. Why else would they make that statement so definitively if they didn't have it? The area where Soto's body was discovered is where Stearns had been seen driving and seen at the side of the road changing his tire. So he was portraying that he was changing a tire. Soto had, was reported missing on Monday night in Orlando, Florida. After initial reports, she was last seen that morning near Town Loop Boulevard and Hunters Park Lane. However, cops had said she may have already been dead during her final sighting. Stearns is now in jail, having been arrested on child porn. Oh and sexual battery. He has not been charged in connection with the girl's murder. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let's go ahead and continue. There's the man right there, scumbag. Suspect dump backpack and computer. How Stephen Stearns arrested. Guys, watch who you have around your kids. Serious, serious shit. Serious shit. Like, if you got a boyfriend or a husband... And they have a proclivity to like younger girls. Like, I'm 43. I won't even have sex with a woman in her 20s. And if you're in your 30s, I have a problem with you. Because I think you're immature and I hate dealing with immature hoes. The reality of this situation, if you have, like, one of the best things. And listen, one of the best ways to determine whether your boyfriend or husband is one of those people. Is that if you hear how he would defend, like, having sex with an 18-year-old. If you have a husband or boyfriend that has no problem, they're like, hey, if they're 18, they're an adult. No, they're not. They're not. Anyone that's ever raised a, a child past the age of 18 knows that at 18 years old, they are not fucking adults. So ask your husbands, ask your man tonight if he believes that he, that him at 40, 30, 35, 50 should be able to have sex with an 18-year-old. If that person says absolutely divorce him or get rid of him because any grown man that doesn't find sexually young girls sexually attractive would immediately say hell no i wouldn't have a fucking 18 year old i'm telling you right now i wouldn't for a million dollars even if she was a, a an 18 year old because i don't like i said I raise young women. I raise girls that age, and they're still putting silverware. In the, I, I've told this story a million times. My uh, old stepdaughter was still putting silverware in the microwave at 18. I'm not bullshitting you at all. Why anyone would even consider it? So just understand, if you have one of those men that defend people having sex with 18, 19, you know, one of those people that was waiting on you catch me outside girl Danielle Bregoli to turn 18 so he could watch her OnlyFans. If you got with one of those people and he says, well, they're an adult, divorce him immediately. Because let me tell you something. I want you to understand this. A woman, a girl at 18 years old is no different than a girl at 17. Not really. And anybody that's ever raised a child knows this. The difference between 17, a child, 18, an adult, is not that different. They're still children, is my point. Um, that's my point. So if you have one of those people, or you know one of those people, and they, and they believe that somehow that magic little year of time frame somehow makes them an adult, get rid of them. If a man would have sex with an 18-year-old, he would have sex with a 17-year-old. And I assure you of that. I guarantee you of that. Because think about it. Think about it appearance-wise. Has your Does your 18-year-old daughter look any different than she did at 17? Not really. So if he would fuck her at 18, he would have fucked her at 17. That's the point. That's the point. So pay attention to your boyfriends, man. There he was in the car. They say his, her lifeless body was in that car. Video evidence shows Stephen Stearns discarding items in a dumpster at the family Kissimmee apartment complex at 7.35 a.m. They have him on video dumping those items. They have him on video dumping those items. That 
That tells you all you need to know right there. Deputies say they believe Madeline was never dropped off at Hunters Creek Middle School on Monday morning and was dead before then. They also said Stearns allegedly moved her body in the morning hours of Monday after killing her in Kissimmee. Uh, on Friday afternoon, the Orange County Sheriff's Office held a press conference in which they stated that they were confident that the girl was dead. Sheriff John Mina broke the devastating news to Madeline's mother, Jen, on Thursday night. We believe he moved her body in those early morning hours, and that is all still under investigation. And they have found her, by the way. We'll talk about that. Surveillance footage seen by police sees Stearns throwing items in a dumpster at an apartment complex in Kissimmee at 7.45 in the morning. The objects were later recovered and found to be Madeline Soto's backpack and school-issued laptop. Yep, so he was going to take her to school and instead killed her. Stearns was then captured for the second time on video as he returned back to the neighborhood with Madeline's body said to be visible. Police said they believed the teenager was never dropped off and having been killed hours earlier in Kissimmee. Police said investigators discovered disturbing images when they looked through Stearns' phone, along with proof that he attempted to delete evidence of the related material. After his arrest, Stearns invoked his right to an attorney and declined to speak. That's what we have at this point in time. This beautiful young girl is unfortunately dead. They're confident that uh, Soto is indeed uh, dead. He's been transferred to the Orange County Jail. You can't make this shit up, right? Madeline S Soto suspect Stephen Stearns doesn't show at all for his first court appearance. As footage emerges of him tearfully telling local news, it's hard not to blame myself. One day after the Florida girl vanished, Stearns, the suspect in the murder of the 13-year-old Madeline Soto, to keep in mind this is all before a body was found, did not appear at all for his first court hearing, as creepy footage has emerged of him. Her body was found, okay, now on Friday afternoon in woods close to where she disappeared four days after she was reported missing. The grim discovery came hours after police called him the prime suspect. This is crazy. So then he refused to come. Where he, faced, he did not appear. He's uh, facing charges of sexual battery, possession of material depicting sexual performance by a child. I wonder... If this dickhead had some sort of shit with her on the phone, and she was going to tell, and he said, fuck that, I'm killing her. I wonder if that's exactly what happened. It just feels like the likelihood, right? I want you to understand, as they were missing, I want you to watch these two jackasses. I don't mean two. Jennifer Soto probably completely innocent. But I want you to watch Stephen Stearns. They speak to Channel 9. Hold on, let me see if I can get this to load. Okay. So the first question is if I can have your first, your last name, and spell the whole Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Here he is. S-T-E-P-H-A-N-S-T-E-R-N-S. This cocksucker went on the news, Stephen. You seem very emotional right now. Explain to us. I dropped her off. Right. Here's, a, here's what he told the news. What were the conversations that y'all had in the car when you dropped her off? Not much. She was asleep for most of the way. Told her have a good day at school when she got out. And I love her. She said, thanks. Love you, too. That's his story. What was it? And so where, where, where do you think she could possibly be? I mean, this isn't, as I was told, this isn't normal behavior. This is not normal behavior. She's not the type that would just run off. We Goddamn we chomos. We we're scared. We just want her home. These fucking chomos are disgusting, disgusting people. Disgusting person, people. Here's a little bit more from the news. You follow breaking news in Osceola County. The body of 13-year-old Maddie Soto has been found. The Orange County Sheriff's Office just confirmed that news. Sky Fox is flying over a wooded area along Old Hickory Tree Road. We're told Maddie Soto's body was found near there in a remote area. Fox 35 Stephanie Buffamonte joins us live. And Stephanie, what can you tell us about this heartbreaking development? 
Yeah, truly heartbreaking. We are learning that Madeline Soto's body was found right near where I am standing on Hickory Tree Road. And they found her body around 4.30 this afternoon, according to the sheriff's office, in a very wooded area. And a source tells Fox 35 that it takes a couple of miles to get to where her body was found by foot. I want to just show you what it looks like over here right now. You can see we're blocked off um, at this intersection. A sheriff's office deputy blocking off the area where they say that they found Madeline Soto's body. And now this is Sky Fox video of teams out here searching this area. And this, of course, comes after the Orange County Sheriff John Mina said that he was confident that Maddie was dead and that they were working to find her body. That was the latest we had heard from earlier this afternoon. And now we are getting this heartbreaking update that her body was found. I want to show you a picture of this car. This is Stephen Stern's car, who was Maddie's mom's boyfriend. He was a suspect in her homicide case. Um, he was last seen driving a silver Lincoln and in this area of Old Hickory Tree Road and Nolte Road. And now, of course, we are learning that her body was found in a wooded area. Uh, we, are, of course, um, are going to try to find out any more information about this case, and we will bring it to you live. For now, Here's the thing, right? Here's the thing about this. Um, and they did arrest Stephen Stern. I'll give you that. My, my belief about this case at this point is that either he and her had done something. I don't mean to speak ill of the dead. In my opinion, either they had been doing something and she was going to tell on him or he had tried to do something to her and she was going to tell on him. You see the point? So more than likely, he made, made a pass or did something, some sort of molestation, some sort, and she was gonna, and she was the only one that could tell on him, and he got rid of the, the witness, the victim. Did you hurt her? Are you a pedophile? What's on your cell phone? Why aren't you talking to investigators? Where was Maddie last seen? Why aren't you helping her mother and her family? This is a little girl. Oh, he's in cuffs. Help them find Maddie. Where is Maddie? What is, where is she? What did you do with her? Tell us something. I, I sometimes, I, I, bet, I bet you it's a true crimer out there doing that shit too. That's why I hate true crimers. They ask the dumbest questions. Why aren't you helping her? Well, excuse me, bitch, I'm in cuffs. You know what I'm saying, the dummy? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know who that was, but I assure you, it was probably a true crimer. They always say that same thing. There's those same type things. As if they're going to get an answer from the motherfucker. You know what I mean? It is bizarre to me. It is definitely bizarre to me to watch some of them go. And he did waive his first court appearance. After the body of 13-year-old Maddie Soto was found, the prime suspect he did in the disappearance was a no-show in court today. He Thanks easily for joining did. us at 5, I'm Manny Martinez. Stefan Stearns waived his first appearance before a judge this morning. For the second time in just a span of a few days, he's now facing sexual battery and child pornography charges, but has not so far yet been charged in Maddie's death. Fox I wonder... If like he had been filming her in the bathroom or something like that. The child pornography. I really feel like it's going to be her on that phone. Y'all agree with me? City 5's Matt Treza explains why more charges could be on the way. Stephen Stearns was a no-show for his first appearance in Osceola County Court. His lawyer didn't even want the judge reading out the charges. Stephen Stearns? Or Stephen Stearns? Your Honor, at this time, I am going to waive Mr. Stern's appearance. I'm also going to waive the reading of these charges. Mr. Stern's is aware of what he's been arrested for. At the first appearance, <laughs> Stern's face charges include... He knows his ass about to get fucked up. He knows. ...being sexual battery and possession of material depicting sexual performance by a child. Stearns had voluntarily handed his phone to investigators... What a dummy. ...who managed to recover photos and videos that they called disturbing. Investigators say he's also the prime suspect in Maddie Soto's disappearance. I bet you we're going to find out she's on that, that phone. And I'm not saying that she did it willingly or anything like that. I, my, I believe wholeheartedly we're going to find out she was on that phone. Search teams finally recovered Maddie's body Friday evening after an exhaustive search through the woods in Osceola County. 
The judge said Stearns would stay behind Fucked bars. Up. Understood, sir. You got zero bond and 24 CF 632. Good luck to you. Orange County deputies have turned over the case to Kissimmee police. Sheriff John Mina says they have proof Stearns tried to cover his tracks after Maddie's death. We have video evidence that shows Stephen Stearns discarding items in a dumpster in that apartment complex in Kissimmee at 735. I know exactly where that's at. February 26. Detectives later recovered Madeline's backpack and her school issued laptop from that dumpster. At 819, we have evidence that shows Stephen Stearns returning to the complex and Madeline was visible in that vehicle. We believe she was already dead at that time. Damn. Former Orlando Police Chief Orlando Rolone says Stearns may have thought he could fool investigators. What a dummy. This is a perfect example of someone who probably thought, uh, I can get away with this. And unfortunately, everything is pointing at the fact that he <laughs> has now been caught for the murder of this child. Well, no, he can't get away with shit. The dummy gave him the phone with the child born on there. He's a, he, some people just are far too goddamn dumb. Meanwhile, speaking of dumb, I don't know if you guys heard this, but John Benet Ramsey's killer, uh, potential killer, Gary Oliva's out of jail. This is a dude that confessed to the murder of John Benet Ramsey. He's been he's out though. He's been released from prison for his child pornography charges. You man, you can't make this up. We got a lot of fucking weirdos running around here. John Benet Ramsey's killer's possibly out here. We have clearly a weirdo here with the Madeline Soto case. Beautiful little girl. Probably just her mom was with the wrong guy. And just to be perfectly honest, I still believe that you guys should be able to see the signs. You know if your man's a chomo or not. If your man finds young girls hot, then he's probably a chomo. I like women older than me. Which probably, you, you, do you see the difference? Like, if you get one of those guys that are like, I like young, hot things, they're probably a chomo. And I know I'm going to get a lot of guys in the comment section getting mad saying, oh, a young 25-year-old girl is hot. No, she's not. She's a little girl, man. As a, as, a, as a dude with gray in our beards and hair, if you look at a 25-year-old even and be like, that's hot, bro, you got a problem. You got a legit, you're a pedophile. I don't give a fuck if the bitch is 25. There's something wrong with you, period. At your age, fuck your age. That's the way this shit works. Let's get over here, man. Let's talk about Lake and Riley. Now this is gonna be both a political type story. We've already discussed this and ultimately, um, we're going to just give you updates on this. The sheriff of the Georgia County where nursing student Lakin Riley was murdered by Venezuelan criminal scumbag illegal alien. And by the way, I want to make something clear. All of you people that say you can't keep calling them all criminals. Yes, I can. 100% of the illegal aliens in this country are criminals. 100%. 100% of them broke a law by being here. That means they're all criminal scum. Period. Anyways, campaigned on not cooperating with ICE, the sheriff did. The sheriff of the county where Lakin Riley was allegedly murdered by an illegal alien sack of shit said while on campaign trail that he would not cooperate with ICE. Sheriff John Williams and Athens Mayor Kelly Gertz are being pointed at as residents, uh, by residents as the reasons for it. Of course, you don't want to cooperate with ICE. You don't want to, uh, you don't want to Follow the laws of the land. Ultimately, we end up in situations like this. And that's why they're letting the sheriff and the mayor have it. Now, the, the Lake and Riley, there, it's also being said she called 911 during the goddamn attack by, by the little illegal lawn care specialist who tried stopping her from phoning cops as authorities refused to release her call for help. Why are, are you, why is this police department refusing to release the call? She was calling for help. Why are you refusing to release the call after y'all fucked this up? She was connected to a 911 operator while fighting for her life. And these police, these mayors, these sheriffs, this town who basically 
is a is a is a town that that I apparently allows and likes illegal aliens. They they don't want to release the call because they don't want you to understand how much of a sanctuary city sack of shit that they are. Lincoln Riley's shattered mother says her daughter's murder was avoidable, avoidable tragedy. Of course it was. Stop letting in the lawn care specialists, the taco vendors. After stop multiculturalism is a disease. After she was killed on a Georgia jogging trail in broad daylight by the little illegal alien. She spoke out for the first time after her daughter died. Beautiful women right there. Going somewhere in this world. Biden campaign, meanwhile, says it's racist. Of course we are. Of course, to suggest migrant crime is rising. Yes, it is right rising because 100% of them are criminals. After the murder of Lake and Riley and slams Trump for his poisoning the blood of the country, claims, no, you are poisoning the blood of the country. It's that simple. You're letting, you're, you're, you're not, they're not sending their best. And you're letting them all in by the millions and millions. And we're starting to see like this shit like this happen all the time. And if you and if any of us fight against it and say, now nah, fuck this, they say you're racist. You're racist if you don't want people to just walk in your home who doesn't live there. Alejandro Mayorkas, this sack of shit that's been impeached, pushes back on Republican assertion that Biden immigration policy is to blame for of course it is. You guys are soft. If you would have built the goddamn wall and if you were hard on immigration, this shit wouldn't have happened. Ain't it outstanding how these people can, even though it's their policies that led to this, even though it is their policies that led to this, they still say it's Trump's fault, everything's Trump's fault. Well, Trump won today, 9-0, bitch. Go. Georgia, where earlier today we heard from the mayor of Athens and things got pretty heated. A group of protesters coming into that meeting and addressing the mayor themselves, even calling for him to resign. We want to bring in Fox 5's Eric Perry, who joins us now with more on what happened today. Eric, walk us through what they said and the community reaction following the death of Lake and Riley. Yeah, good afternoon, evening to you. What we initially were brought here for is for the mayor to lay out his initiatives regarding safety moving forward. But those protesters who were in the back of the room were calling out at times, couldn't even let the mayor speak, as they believe that Athens was listed as a sanctuary city. The mayor says that's simply not the case. Resign now! Resign now! Heated moments in the city of Athens Wednesday morning as Mayor Kelly Gertz attempted to unveil a safety plan. The right. only appropriate number of murders in this community, and the number that we are going to be working our tails off every day for, is what? Is zero. Oh, you okay. Well, I got something else to say, dickface. The only acceptable number of illegal alien immigrant criminals acceptable is zero. How about that? How come one crime is not allowed? But do you see the point? Maybe if we followed all of our laws, it would lead to less criminality. Seems simple, doesn't it? That girl in Georgia's blood is on you liberals' hands. I'm saying all of you, all of you are responsible. Every last one of you that clicked the Biden vote, it is all your fault. And I hope you all perish in your sleep, you sacks of shit. Every one of you and your kids and your family, you sacks of shit. That's reality. Before I get up out of here, talk about Koberger real quick. A lot of you guys are whining because the trial's been put off till 2025. Dummies! They still haven't given him all the discovery. Koberger's not supposed to go to trial until he gets the discovery. They can't even work on the case until they get all the discovery. Blame the prosecution. Blame the state of Idaho. Don't blame Brian Koberger and Ann Taylor. Give them all the discovery so they can defend themselves correctly, dummies. I'm JB Gunner. You can't, I can't believe these motherfuckers. If you guys like what I do here and you find my content valuable, feel free to hit the links down below. Support the channel. They're giving all kinds of free shit to all these illegal immigrant scumbags and it's these libtards that's voting for it. Use your money the right way. Support the people that support your values. Hit the links down below. Love you guys. I'm going to get up out of here. Let me know in the comments in the comments section. 
lot of, a lot of fuckery going on right now. I'll see y'all tomorrow.